What up, y'all? It's your boy, Cap, and I want to welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode one of The Recap. And today, the topic of discussion is, obviously, La Coronita virus is going around, and everybody's all scared. You go to the grocery store, you can't even find no toilet paper, but all the water in the world. It doesn't make sense, right? So let's just get into it. Enough of the jokes. The coronavirus is owned by a British company called the Purbright Institute. The Purbright Institute is named after Henry de Worms, the son of Solomon de Worms, who are Rothschild. Now, if you know anything about history in the proper context, then you know that the Rothschilds have been instrumental in acquiring the wealth of most of the planet. Uh, they have uh, conquered the banking system and they're actually the pioneers of germ warfare. And so it just seems that the irony of a uh, British virus hitting China at a time like this and really fucking up the stock market, it just seems ironic. Now, you can blame the fact that they're in shit at the stores on the virus. You can blame it on the fact that China isn't producing. You can blame it on all these things. But at the end of the day, that's just not the problem. So let's just get into it. The coronavirus is owned by a company called the Purbright Institute. The Purbright Institute is a British institute. It is actually linked to a company called Kinetic. And these guys are weapons manufacturers. They, they have satellites. They, they are basically uh, have any spy technology you could imagine. Now, uh, like I said, it is also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is a part of this company, which they ran a simulation of this virus a few months ago to see how quickly it would spread. So that brings up my next point. I wanted to talk to you guys about 1976. There was a swine flu uh epidemic back then yes 1976 and guess what there was a woman by the name of eleanor mcbean in 1976 who actually discovered the fact that the swine flu at that time was being given in the vaccines let me say that again in 1976 when the swine flu first broke out dr eleanor mcbean found out that the swine flu was being given in the vaccines What was the president at the name of, uh, was uh, Ford, right? Gerald Ford and the Rockefeller Foundation were pushing for the vaccines at that time. Now, what happened in 1976 is there's three people documented that died on the spot from getting the vaccine. They probably went into anaphylactic shock, which is uh, when your body receives a foreign foreign tissue and doesn't know how to respond to it. Because what are vaccines at the end of the day? They give you the virus. They say they give you the virus in order for your body to learn how to fight it off, right? But swine flu comes from a fucking animal. And the only way you can get an animal virus is through your bloodstream. You can't eat it through food. It can't be transferred through saliva. It has to be given in the bloodstream. And that's why it's so important that you know this, that the vaccinations might be mandatory one day and in vaccinations we've always known and it's documented they put mercury in vaccinations they put a whole list of different diseases germs bacteria viruses in vaccines throughout history and given them to third world countries documented look it up on a, on a more positive note and i want to end this on a, on a positive note uh, but before i do i think it's important that people understand that there's always been a ruling class in this world that has always believed that there's too many people on the planet they really think that there's not enough uh, food and resources for everybody. And under the current food system, I agree, because what are we doing? We're giving fucking cows corn and we're growing all these, we're growing food and, and selling it and distributing it in a dishonest way. How, why does a mango cost more than a fucking cheeseburger that has to be assembled by somebody with bread, cheese, tomatoes, lettuce, and, and piece of a fucking cow? It doesn't make any sense. So the food isn't priced, honestly. And so the people, of the, uh, uh, the, the people who have controlled the world for so long, they truly believe this. And when I say this, I'm talking about the people like Henry Kissinger, who, who said that the easiest way to rid and depopulate the planet is through a virus. Look it up. Henry Kissinger. He is, he is revered by, by uh, the American government because he's been in it so long and he's contributed so much. The Rothschilds, another family who, who has always pushed germ warfare and always talked about depopulation with no regard, with no shame. And so I want to end this by telling you guys this. If you guys are worried about a virus, 
you guys don't need to worry because Dr. Sebi already proved it, baby. He already showed us how to survive this, man. And so if you don't know who Dr. Sebi is, he took 79 people to the Supreme Court of the United States of America and proved that he can heal cancer. Heal cancer. He healed, he, he healed AIDS. You know, how do you do that? By the way, AIDS patent 5676977. Look that up sometime. Dr. Sebi found out that if you keep the body's alkaline level at a high pH level, that no bacteria can live in it. He found out that if you reduce the mucus in the body, no virus or bacteria could live in it. So if you're concerned about virus or bacteria, all you have to do is eat healthy. What is a high alkaline food? What is low alkaline food? That's for you to look up. But Dr. Sebi already pointed it out. Again, he won that Supreme Court decision 79 people he brought in soon after you know uh, they had the target you, when you do shit like that you become a victim of the pharmaceutical company's wrath you know what i'm saying they finally caught him you know in jail they probably gave him some fucked up food and he died of heart failure but that was before inspiring uh, showing a whole generation of, of of natural doctors that it could be done right so now we know this the only way that viruses could live in the body is if they're attached to the mucus if you rid the body of the mucus, viruses, disease can attach itself to it. And and Sebi cured AIDS, he cured cancer, he cured uh, blindness, herpes, all kinds of stuff documented. So again, uh, it's, it's information worth looking into. Uh, I hope that everybody enjoyed this video. I hope that you share this with anybody that, you know, will probably find this interesting. I know that a lot of people are worried at a time like this, but you know what, for my creatives, I think honestly, this is the time to hit the studio. And it's time to be creative, you know what I'm saying? But don't let that affect you, man. If you, you know, the parks are empty. I'm taking my puppies out to the park. You know, we're running. It's empty. And so, again, I just don't want you guys to uh, be in a state of fear. Because when you're in a state of fear, your body stops producing cells. Your digestive tract doesn't work the same. You vibrate hella low and you're more susceptible to sickness, man. And you're more susceptible to disease. So it's important that you don't stay in a state of fear. And on that note... I want to tell everybody peace. Thank you for joining me for the first episode of the recap. I want to thank my co-producer, Wildflower Jess. And I want y'all to join me on episode two. We're going to get more into the business. Till then, I appreciate you guys joining us. My name is Cap K. Mantis. Signing off. Peace.